Hi, Getty from GettyStore.com here with Butternut Squash. And in today's session, we are going to cut it, peel it, and cube this butternut squash. We're going to use those cubes uh, to roast. We're going to use them raw in a recipe, and we are going to freeze some of those cubes. Stay tuned for, for all of that in today's session. Now, butternut squash is a super versatile, mild, um, holds its shape type of squash. So it's perfect for cubing and using in various ways where you want to hold that particular shape. So butternut squash, perfect for that. We're going to cut into this right away, but before we do, always wash your squash before you cut into it. So I've already taken it to the sink and given it a good, a good scrub. Before I cut it, I want to dry it so that it's not a slippery mess uh, because it's already tricky enough to cut, as you may know. Now, um, to cut this, I am going to separate the bulb and the neck so that it's a little bit more manageable. The other piece that I'm going to cut off is the stem because it's really hard to cut through. So right away, in fact, I can just go ahead and take that, that stem off and we see that beautiful orange color coming through. Now, with a butternut, all the seeds are in the bulb part. So you see I've bought one that has a nice long neck because I can get more flesh because it's all in the neck. So in order to make this manageable, I, I wanna separate the bulb from the neck end. And then I'm going to worry about, uh, about peeling it. So to cut through the squash, and depending on how hard your squash is, you can either just go ahead and uh, start working your way through it. Um, if it's very tough, make yourself a little bit of a slit and then use that, uh, that tea towel to cover the back of the knife and to give your hand a little bit of protection as you wiggle back and forth and work your knife uh, through, that, uh, through that cut. Now, um, the cloth will protect your hand, it will prevent any slipping. If the squash is still really tough, you can also use that as a protector and use a meat mallet to really push your knife, uh, knife through all the way. Now, if that is still too tough uh, to get through, then go ahead, poke it all over with a knife or a fork and put it in the microwave for three to five minutes to soften up your squash. And that will work with just about any squash. So now I have my bulb end and my neck end, and it's going to be a lot easier to start and peel because it's much more manageable. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel. As you can see, I can just use a regular uh, peeler, vegetable peeler, to peel my, uh, my squash. When it comes to the bulb end, again, I can continue on with my, uh, with my peeler, or if you feel it's a little bit too unmanageable, you can also use a knife and run down the sides uh, like, like this. So go ahead and peel that all over. I personally like using the peeler. I find it quite, uh, quite easy to follow the, the contours and so forth. So I'm gonna finish peeling this. Okay, and there we are, the, the final couple of, uh, of peels to the squash. So um, here's my, my neck piece, and here is uh, the bulb piece. Now I haven't worried about taking that out uh, at this point. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get some cubes out of, uh, out of this uh, butternut squash. So uh, always I want to have a nice stable surface to, to work on so that my knife is safe. This will be easier to cut if I have half, half the, the neck that I'm dealing with. Now I have a nice flat surface that I can cut. And I wanna cut nice even half inch uh, slices and dices so I'm going to cut these half rounds that I'm going to then be able to turn into cubes and I will do this and then I can kind of look and there's my there's my cubes I can do two slices at a 
time. And now it's really up to you what size of cubes do you want. Of course, the more even you get your cubes, the more evenly they will, uh, they will roast. So I can go ahead and do that with the, uh, with the rest of the squash. So there's the, uh, the neck pieces um, and all nicely cubed. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roast these particular cubes. So uh, once they're all diced, I get out my uh, baking pan and I put them on the pan just like that. Now I'm going to use a Cajun spice to uh, flavor these. You could use salt and pepper, you could use lime and cumin, you can use a Moroccan spice. Basically any flavoring that you uh, enjoy, you can use uh, your uh, seasoning on these uh, roasted cubes. So I'm going to go ahead and drizzle on some, um, I'm using canola oil, um, very little flavor to that, great for all things. And then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of our favorite Cajun seasoning. Just gonna sprinkle that on. And then I'm going to use my hands and massage that all over. Now the oil will help uh, build a nice crust on these so that you get a little bit of caramelization. We're going to bake these at 400 degrees. So preheat the oven, set it to 400 degrees so that you've got some nice heat to help get that little bit of browning on the outside. Now make sure you don't crowd the pan so that um, the, the pieces have a chance to bake rather than steam. So you want to spread them out a little bit. And there we go, some nice seasoning on there. And our cubes are ready to go in the oven. Uh, 400 degrees, probably 30 to 40 minutes uh, for them to become nice and tender. So that leaves us with the bulb piece, the bottom piece, and we want to get cubes out of this as well. So the first thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to cut it in half. And notice how I'm doing that rocking back and forth and uh, slicing that right through. And as I said, this is where the cavity is. So these, um, this is where we want to take out and scoop out these seeds. Now, these seeds, just like pumpkin seeds, you could roast if you're so inclined. Um, they're a little bit smaller than pumpkin seeds, uh, but they work just as well. And so I'm going to do that to both halves. Notice I haven't dealt with, uh, with the bum end yet. That's okay. Um, I will cut that out when I get to cutting uh, the rest of the squash. Now, as you can imagine, we're not going to get quite as uniform pieces with this uh, gaping hole in there, but we're still going to get nice cubes. I like using the cubes from this end in soups and sauces where uh, I probably won't notice any, any misshapen uh, split pieces, so where uniformity doesn't matter as much. And you notice I just chopped off that, uh, that bum end. Uh, not a big deal. Away we go. So now um, I just want to again use a stable surface, the nice flat side, and cutting even slices uh, from that. And this one again, I want to cut in half. And now you're back to just going and cubing the the squash and trying to get uniform sized pieces. So sometimes that means making an extra cut or so. And there we have it, the last cut and my butternut squash has been cubed. So now I know that my the recipe that I have in mind for these cubes is a butternut squash uh, chili, a vegetarian chili, and I'm going to need about two cups of cubed squash. That means I'm going to have some squash left over. Now of course I could add more to my chili, but um, this looks about a good amount that I would use 
use in another recipe as well. So, but I'm not gonna make five recipes today. So I can go ahead and I can freeze butternut squash just like it is. So to freeze these cubes, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them in a freezer bag. And that's as simple as it is. So if I use these within the next three months, it's all good to go. If I want to freeze it for longer, I would consider cooking or roasting them. They're going to end up a little bit uh, of lost texture, but if I just want handy dandy cubed squash in the next three months, this is ideal. So go ahead, squeeze out as much air as you possibly can. I probably could have used a smaller bag, but there you have it. Now that is ready for the freezer and use within three months. Use them just like you would use uh, raw squash and away you go. So there you have it. Frozen, raw, ready for a recipe and roasted butternut squash cubes in the oven. Thanks for watching. For more information, go to gettystuart.com and if you like what I'm doing here, uh, subscribe or give a comment down below.